welcome to the Online Business Launchpad podcast. Um, Thank well, you for having me. It's fantastic to have you here, Maria. Um, to our listeners, I've got Maria Fiella here with me. And I've come across Maria in a, in a group, a community that we both belong to. It's uh, Pat Flynn's SPI Pro community, and I've met a lot of interesting people there. And Maria does something really, really interesting and a little bit close to my heart. She's, she calls herself the crazy plant lady, which I find <laughs> fun. Um, but she's interested in, in, in the use of plants and how they can help us sort of get through the day uh, in terms of, you know, we are all going through these interesting issues with COVID-19 where uh, lots of us are in lockdown. Um, I'm in Melbourne, Australia, so our lockdown is more extreme than a lot of other people's has been. Um, and I love plants and I have a whole balcony full of plants and they're what help keep me sane. So I thought I have to talk to Maria. I have to just, you know, just see what she does and how she does it. So welcome again. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. You're a fellow crazy plant lady. I'd love that. I absolutely am. Absolutely am. So I, you know, for our listeners out there, can you just maybe tell us a little bit about who you serve and why you do it? Sure. Um, well, first off, I call myself a crazy plant lady, but you know, on my business card, it doesn't say CEO, it says CPL for crazy plant lady. Um, so yeah, I call, I'm a, actually I'm a plant killer turned plant lady. So for my first like 26 years of my life, I was like a notorious, I, I identified as a notorious plant killer. I tried bringing plants home you know, many times, never really learned their names, never really knew I was, what I was bringing home or how to care for them. They always died. And frankly, I almost used to think of plants as like longer lasting bouquets because I just knew I would kill them and had no interest in empowering myself to figure out how to do so. Um, because I'm also uh, by trade professionally a, a professional musical theater performer. So plant lady dumb has been, you know, my second career. Um, but three years ago, when I finally got to move into my, uh, I finally got to move in with my boyfriend and uh, also fulfilled a dream of performing on Broadway, I decided to give plants one more chance because I was really feeling like I wanted to nest. And the difference that time was that I wanted to actually learn and actually force myself to stop killing them instead of just agreeing, you know, to stick with fresh cut flowers. Um, and that experience truly changed my life. So I was the classic New York City. I lived in 500 square feet in New York City, overscheduled, addicted to screens, millennial. Like I am as classic female millennial as it gets. And once I started caring for plants, I experienced this huge shift in my general wellness, general well being, happiness, because before plants, I used to wake up and immediately open my phone, start scrolling Instagram, and I'd have coffee with my cell phone in the morning, basically. And I think a lot of people are in that position, especially in 2020 when we've all been indoors so much. Um, but when I started caring for plants, I would leave my phone in the charger and I would take my coffee and I would spend some time with my plants in the morning. And I found these newfound moments of stillness and awe of these growing things that were not dying under my care. I mean, it was so exciting. Um, I started seeing all of these life parallels in the plants of, you know, uh, seeing these, these lessons of growth and dormancy and planting a seed and the patience that it takes, you know, to see that seed come to, to come to full growth, full expression of itself. And I just was fully lit up and changed and decided that this is what I'm here to do. I'm here to help everybody successfully care for plants and experience the shift in mindset and wellness that I experienced as a millennial because in part, I was almost kicking myself that I didn't do it earlier. Um, so the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast was created. I created it as a total passion project. I had no intention in making it a business. Um, at the time when I started the podcast, there were no other plant podcasts in the States. There was, I started it because it was something that I really wanted that I couldn't find. And I thought I would do 10 episodes because I was a Broadway performer and I thought I would, you know, book another Broadway show really quickly and I wouldn't have time for the podcast, but 
I think something like upstairs kind of aligned where I didn't book another show very fast. So I had a little bit more downtime and uh, downloads just kept doubling. And I ended up getting online and finding this community of people who felt just like me, who loved plants. Like, I think that you could probably attest, you know, when you see another plant person and you share like, oh, I have a balcony full of plants or, oh, I'm a plant lady too. There's this like kindred spirit connection that other people don't get. And that's in part why I started the podcast. Cause like my friends like did not want to listen to me talk about the amazing smell of my tomato plant. They did not want to talk to me about my monstera leaf having its first fenestrated leaf. Like they didn't want to talk about any of that, but my friends that I made online who were other crazy plant people really did and really saw that really got me. I felt really seen in, in that way. Um, so yeah, so the last three year journey has been taking Bloom and Grow Radio, my podcast, which is a podcast to help everybody successfully care for a plant, no matter what your skill level and going from what I thought would be a 10 episode little passion project that I just kind of put into the world as like my love letter to plants and my love letter to humanity and turning it into what now is, is looking like a full-time business. So it's been a really, really, cra- really crazy business journey and uh, very thankful to Pat Flynn and, and Smart Passive Income Pro to connect me with people like you who help, you know, entrepreneurs grow into, uh, into real grown up, real grown up entrepreneurs instead of, you know, silly ones, I think, <laughs> if that could be a distinction. A smile, because I know exactly what you mean, because you start out, it's all about sort of the imposter syndrome side of things, isn't it? You sort of start out thinking, I want to do this. I want to do this entrepreneurial journey. Mm-hmm. And, and you just you look around you and you think, oh, there's so many people out there who know so much more than I do. But you grow and you learn. And I like, I like it that in this world of entrepreneurship, people are willing to share. Totally. And it's interesting you say that because I had a huge hang up when I started my podcast that I could never be legit or it would never necessarily really work because the way that my podcast is set up is that I learn alongside my listener. So I'm a novice. I'm a plant killer actively trying to not kill plants. So I'm not an educator in that regard. I'm not a plant expert. I don't have a degree in horticulture. And so I thought, well, how how can I ever build a business around this? How can I ever be legit? How are people going to ever want to work with me because of that? But when you realize, especially as an entrepreneur, that your perceived weaknesses are actually your greatest strengths, like that's a huge game changer. And what I realized was because I sit with my listener, they identify and relate with me. I am them. I really view myself as my listener. I'm the spokesperson for anyone who is trying to learn how to care for plants. And that is an extremely cool opportunity because you get to relate and advocate for your community in a way that a general quote unquote teacher cannot. So that was definitely a huge shift in my entrepreneurial journey for sure. That's really, uh, that's really an important point, I think, because I talk to so many people because of what we do. We teach people how to start online businesses. Yes. We talk to so many people who say, but I really like this topic or this particular theme, or I, ha- I want to help solve this particular problem, but I don't have the degree. I don't have the certification. I don't have the qualifications. And just being willing to give yourself permission to be the student on the journey is yeah. so important because the reality is, and I've, I've heard this before, and it's so true, you only have to be a couple of steps ahead of somebody to be able to show them what to do next. And you're the guide, not the expert. Yes, story brand. Yes, 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 exactly. Donald Miller's story <laughs> brand, so powerful. Um, so powerful. What a great book. Everybody should read that book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And he's got some really great tools, by the way, just to sh- shout out to him. But um, he's got some great tools that will help you sort of refine your story if, for those people who are interested. But anyway, um, I, I was I was listening to what you're saying, and I was just thinking, oh, you know, that whole thing about killing plants, that used to be me. It definitely did used to be me. Um, and the and, only, yeah, go ahead. The, only, the only barrier is education. Like the only difference I feel like, I, I truly in my heart of hearts feel like everyone can successfully care for a plant as long as they understand their environment and the care needs of the plant that they're bringing into it. Yeah. Um, but so many people just don't, 
either care or they don't know exactly how to find that information or they feel embarrassed that they're 30 and they don't really understand photosynthesis or, you know, anything like that. Um, it's, it's really interesting. Anyway, I could talk about this for a long time. I, this is something I really love, but I want to come back to, to, to you and, and your plants. And one of, one of the things that I, a piece of research I read a, a long time ago, and I, I honestly can't remember where I read it, but I read something about um, the scientists had shown that for people who are in stressful situations, looking at nature, whether that was being in nature or mm -hmm. looking at a picture of nature for like 60 seconds, something really tiny actually reduced your stress levels some incredible amount. Have you found yeah. that with what you do? Oh yeah. It's wild. I'm in the process of actually doing a lot of research on this topic. And um, so there's a concept of a restorative environment. So uh, okay. There's this concept. Let me take that back. There's this concept called attention restoration theory. And basically we're spending way too much time on screens right now. Like humans, the brain is not designed to be on screens the way we are. I woke up, I was at my computer at 9am. It's six o'clock right now. I, I'm going to still, I still have work to do. Like I'm on my screen all the time. Our eyes, we're not supposed to have that much blue light. We're not supposed to be focused this way. Like it's just not the way humans are designed. Right. Um, and on top of that, on top of working from home, we all now have these like mini computers that we carry around in our hands that mask as phones that, you know, we can't like go to the bathroom without having a screen anymore. Unfortunately, it's kind of crude, but it's like kind of where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, and the brain just isn't designed to act that way. The brain is designed to be in nature. There's actually studies that show that uh, our brain is attracted to fractals, which are the patterns that occur in nature. So like the patterns of a snowflake or the patterns of a leaf or um, a seashell. A seashell, exactly. Like something happens in our brain that relaxes when we see those things. Um, so there's like these concepts of attention. Um, shoot, they're, they're slipping, the actual names for them are slipping my mind, but there's focused attention, which requires like actively blocking out other things. So when I'm doing work, like I can't just have a thought pop into my head, like I have to kind of work and that kind of attention is um, not sustainable. It's, uh, it can get depleted and it can in, uh, bring on mental fatigue. Then there's involuntary attention, which is when you're walking outside and a butterfly flies by and you're just like naturally, you know, brought to the butterfly or you're watching clouds pass in the sky. Like you're actively kind of paying attention, but it's not work. And for a lot of people, that's where a lot of their most creative ideas come when they're allowed, you know, when people say like their most creative ideas come in the shower, it's kind of the same thing. So plants and pictures of plants create that. Uh, so creating a restorative environment is giving yourself the opportunity to have more involuntary attention. Um, they're like, I'm, ta I'm kind of mixing like several studies together right now and what I'm telling you, but they all like kind of make sense. They all kind of pair over each other. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, there are scientists who have done these studies, whether they've been in school, in school rooms, in offices, even in hospitals, where even just having pictures of nature signals to your brain that that is kind of a restorative thing. And especially in hospitals, there's really interesting studies. People with views of outdoors have recovered faster than people with no views of outdoors. So I think as entrepreneurs, but also as humans, having plants in your eye line of where you work all day, having some sort of area of plants like your balcony that you can actually walk to, leave your space, walk to, like let your eyes rest, let your mind kind of reset. Water, you know, one of my favorite things is to like literally watch dew drop off of a leaf. It's so like silly and I guess people would think that it's boring, but it's such a nice relaxing thing is to like water a plant and just watch a drop of dew drop off and just think about like the physics of it and like when exactly is it going to drop off and all of that. Like it's just such a nice thing to focus on. It's almost a meditation. Um, 
but yeah, like plants are important. They're, they're, I, I personally think, especially when we feel the aftermath of COVID and the aftermath of what working from home has kind of done to everything, I think plants are going to be a huge, hugely instrumental part of everyone kind of taking back their wellness and their attention and restoring the mental fatigue that I think so many people are struggling with right now, myself included, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't know about you, but one of the things that I, that I absolutely have to do as an entrepreneur in order to handle the busy schedule, the busy lifestyle, the, the massive amounts of work that are there, because, because unlike for me and like for lots of other businesses, um, COVID has just increased demand for what we do. So mm-hmm. it's busier. So I always have a, I use a, you know, a things to do today thing. It's not a list per se, but it's the most important thing, the second most important thing, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things that I always have on there is, is making sure that I spend some me time. Yeah. It's too easy for me to just go, oh, I'm busy. Somebody, everybody else's needs are more important than mine. And, and to be able to then say, no, I have given myself permission. It's a priority to go and spend some me time. And for me, the, mo- the easiest me time at the moment is to be able to walk out into my balcony, look at my plants, and I'm yeah. with you about that, watching the, the, wa- the water droplet come off the plant and, and drip down because it is a meditation. It is, it is a way of exercising your brain in a slightly different way, and it's so powerful. So highly encourage anyone listening out there that if you don't already have plants around you in your office space or in your eye line, as you say, your, what you can see when you look up from your computer, highly recommended. 